Hey everybody, Jeff Schneider here. It's been a while since I've done a D'Angelo video, so I thought I'd do another, but I wasn't sure which song to break down. So I went to Spotify to see what his most popular track was, and the top result was Lady from his album Brown Sugar. Now at first, I thought Lady wouldn't make for an interesting breakdown because it only has three chords, but after listening to it more closely, I realized there are some really intriguing harmonic things going on, especially that third chord in the progression. Also, the bridge is way more interesting than I remembered and features a really cool gospel walk-up, which we'll get into later in the video. So without further ado, let's kick off with the opening riff. We're in the key of E-flat minor, and this lick is based on the E-flat minor pentatonic scale. From there, he jumps right into the chorus. Starts in the one chord, E flat minor 11. And then goes to the four chord, A flat minor 11. Now going from the one to the four is pretty standard, but because the voicings have so much color, it sounds fresh and soulful. Here's what it would sound like with just a basic E flat minor and A flat minor chord. Now let's add back those sevenths, ninths, and elevenths. So much better. All right, the third chord is where things really get interesting. We've got an E major 13 chord with a sharp 11. You can also think of it as an F sharp major triad over E major. So how do we analyze E major 13 sharp 11? Well, it's the flat two chord, which is non-diatonic. In other words, it's not part of the E flat minor family the way A flat minor is. You see, the root of the chord is E, and there's no E in E flat minor. That said, all the other notes in the voicing I'm playing do exist with an E flat minor. So even though the flat two chord may be non-diatonic, it's not that unexpected sounding. Now, if I went to something like C major nine, that comes out of nowhere because there's only one note that's in the E flat minor scale. Anyway, that's the progression for the chorus and it's the same for the verse. Now, before we jump to the bridge, which has that cool gospel walk up I mentioned earlier, check out the sick vocal run around the two minute mark. This run features that E flat minor pentatonic scale, but with the ninth in there as well. So good. Okay, onto the bridge. Right after that vocal run, the bass goes up. And we land on B major seven. This is the flat six major seven chord, which sounds fancy, but it's actually in the E flat minor family. Here are the next few chords. So now we're going from that B major seven down to G flat add nine over B flat. That's the flat three chord with the third in the bass. Now, a lot of people miss this next one. It's a D flat with an add a nine. That's a flat seven chord. And we got a little Bruce Hornsby action on the voicing there. Nice. Continuing on, we resolve up to an E flat minor seven, the one chord, and repeat that progression starting with the B major seven again. Now in the third repeat, we go from the D flat add nine to E flat seven, not E flat minor. The E flat seven kicks off that gospel walk up, which I love so much. Now let's analyze it. The E flat seven is the five of A flat minor seven. That's a secondary dominant, by the way. Then we go to the two chord, F minor seven. Then the flat three diminished seventh chord, which is G flat diminished seven, which leads us right up into E flat seven over G. Again, that E flat seven is the five of four, the five of A flat minor. And then finally, we resolve to that A flat minor and we'll do A flat minor 11. And now we'll put that whole walk up together. First, just the bass line. You can hear and see how it's just walking up. Let's add the chords. Again, that's E flat seven, F minor seven, G flat diminished seven, E flat seven over G, resolving to A flat minor 11. Finally, we finish off the bridge with a five seven chord. That's a B flat seven, flat nine, flat 13. It's one of my favorite chords in the whole song because it's the first time we hear a true five chord that's not a secondary dominant. It's super climactic, tons of tension, and resolves beautifully back to the tonic. Now here's a little bonus chord for you. 
If you want to get a little extra spicy on that five chord, you can play a G in the voicing, which is the regular 13. That's B flat 13 flat 9. Now you'd think the flat 13 would be spicier, but it's not. And that's because the flat 13, G flat, is already in the E flat minor scale. The regular 13, G, is not. So that's the chord progression to Lady. And guys, if you want to learn more about the theory behind these kinds of chords and progressions, I've got a really great resource for you. This is going to be especially useful if you're just tired of struggling to get that more advanced R&B jazzy sound on the keys. If that sounds like you, then definitely check out my course, Chord Theory for R&B Piano. It's the ultimate resource for learning how to play smooth, soulful chords and progressions like what you hear on your favorite records by D'Angelo, Stevie Wonder, Robert Glasper, and more. Rather than tell you about the program myself, here's what an actual member of the course had to say. I believe this is your magnum opus so far in the music education space. The whole thing is packed with practical and immediately implementable techniques, and it never loses momentum. Each section builds on the last and provides the same level of focus and detail in their explanations. Sometimes these online courses start strong and lose steam during the later and sometimes most interesting and critical parts, but this one just keeps humming right up to the end. Every minute of it has been hugely valuable. So guys, if you want to learn more about the course, you know the drill, click the link on the screen or in the description below. And last but not least, if you want to get those scale charts I used throughout the video, you can download them for free in the link also in the description. All right, that's it for now. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.